looking at the scriptures, that's why there's a difference of opinion between what hell actually is. Okay. It's because we have to use our rational minds to look at that scripture. So please don't tell me that there's the scripture there and then we can all we can all I look and identify that and that's it. And anything else is just sure. opinion. They're, they're linked. Right. Let me tell you, the opinion which says hell is not a hellfire. It's just an opinion of those people who don't like to be burned in a hellfire, other people like to be burned in a hellfire. Their own, their own psychological... I'm just telling that's you. Biggest, that's a huge assumption. No, there's, it's not an there's, assumption. There's, 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 there's very... Do, I can't you, do, you, know, do you know Do you know? there are people who don't want to have any punishment from anyone? Their particular opinion is forcing them to disregard a text which says hellfire is a place where people will burn. It says they're in black and white. What do they do with that text? Oh, no, it doesn't say that. They wish it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So these people, when they bring up their opinions like this, they're going against a clear text. That opinion is disregarded. Kind of. Kind of. Not kind of. With the back, but again, uh, with okay. the Bible, okay. there's, there's, let, things, let me, let me, so there's things if you okay, take me, things literally... Let me carry on, let me carry on to make my point. The Quran graphically describes hellfire. Mm. Graphically. Mm. Imagine a Muslim comes along and says, I don't believe hellfire is like that mm, at all. Mm, it's just separation mm, of God. Mm, mm. What would you say about that person? But the thing is, they, they could have, a, they could have what would you? And the reason I would say is this, yeah. is hermeneutics. It's if they can, if they can yeah. actually put... What, what, is, what is hermeneutics? So essentially, so basically when people are looking at scriptures, mm -hmm. they have to look at the What does the word hermeneutic, hermeneutic mean? Essentially, your um, in investigate. I think it's in investigating. Essentially, it's like um, hermeneutics is an investigation. It's like, yeah, it's interpretation. like an interpretation, investigation. Um, so, like in terms of if you were um, looking at the scripture, mm -hmm. you'd look at say the context and stuff like that. So, for example, some of the issues around kind of um, okay. know, women, women. So, for example, no there's, hellfire. There's a lot of yeah, no, no, so forget, no, no, no. Fine. Forget I'm not, women. I'm not speaking about we I'm have generally. hellfire and Muslim. Generally, so, so to, to say that to say that that that, that thing. Um, as, it, as it is Does said, is, is, is the reality, it's not necessarily Sorry, true. sorry, so it's not, one, it's not one moment. To say that those people the Quran, as I explained to you, is graphic, yeah. graphically explains hellfire, the angels in the hellfire, the gatekeepers, how people will be burned, how their skin will be burned, how it will be recreated. One moment, one moment. It's a literal description throughout the Quran. Muslim comes along, of course a misguided one in that case, and says, there is no such punishment in hellfire. Mm. You are saying his hermeneutic is correct. I would say absolutely not. I would say could you based on what is his hermeneutics or her hermeneutics correct? And then they'd have to they have to give some backing for that. But I'm saying they won't be able to because the Quran literally describes hellfire. There are and different you know, hellfires. You know, exactly, and you know this better than I do. Yeah. I'm just saying, so so I'm saying there's when a lot of metaphor. But before and you I go into metaphor, that, I don't know if that is before metaphor. Before you go into go, what, what, and if they could give reasons for that, then they wouldn't be misguided. No. When the prophet who brought this book explains to you the nature of hellfire, it's no longer a metaphor. When the Quran literally describes it, it's no longer a metaphor. When Jesus describes it, it's no longer a metaphor. It will be for those people who have a disease in their heart, I will say disease of what? Some kind of like, oh, I don't want people to be burned. This is you, maybe. No, but lo logically as well. Logically, Do you know how people become vegetarians? It's the Let's same kind of feeling. Diversion. No, no, it's not diversion. It's the same kind of feeling. They don't want all oh, meat. Oh, no, you don't want animal to be slaughtered because that's their attachment. So, of, 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 right. So when the Bible, the New Testament, mm -hmm. the Old Testament mm -hmm. describes mm -hmm. hellfire yeah. graphically, yeah. literally, yeah. and not, yet... Not always literally. I'm saying those verses which do. But then there's verses that counteract. Hang on. Which want? verses counteracts? Give me one. In Timothy, I can't. I, I can try and look on the verse. You should bring one, and you will see that. Okay, the there is but nothing is that can counteract literal verses. Yes, when you go into hellfire and you suffer and you punish with fire, you are separated from God because God's not going to come and say hi there. But he's not going to. His presence there's, is not going to be known. In verses that saying there's nothing that can separate you from God. So this is where you have to use your rational no, no, mind. No, 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 no. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. You, you, you have wait, to wait, wait, wait. Are you saying there are biblical verses which says nothing can separate yeah, you from God? Yeah, nothing can separate you from God. Why jump? What does this verse mean? Exactly. And the fact you've even asked me that is proving my point. You have to use your rational mind to say, look, that verse... I am I not saying rational mind is a given tool that you have to use in the first place. Use the, using the rational mind exactly. is a prerequisite, right? Yeah, it's what you have to and that's what I'm saying as right. well. Right. Good. When we use it, when we use it, and when, when, when Jesus himself says, all the prophets say, there is hellfire mm. where there's a fire mm. of Jahannam, right? 
There's a valley of Jahannam where there's a fire there and you'll be punished. This is the Bible. Mm. And you'll be separated from God. Mm. How is that metaphorical? Why, why couldn't it be metaphorical? God is metaphorical. Maybe it doesn't exist. No, not, but that's, that's an extent. Do, do, do you see the problem? No, People don't, don't want to be held. That's an extremity and I understand what no, you're saying. I'm, I'm saying, saying yeah. it is quite clear those people who want to reject clear messages from this scripture is because of their bias the belief other already. But is, is, okay, then you look, you go to something like Revelation and then, and then you're saying within obviously what, I mean, angels, you even spoke about Revelation angels, is a dream, my friend. Saying. So exactly. So, again, so how do you take that scripture? In fact, can't say literally. In, in fact, is that a scripture? Is that from God? I would say it's from God, yes. Okay, what makes it from God? But it's meta, but okay, it's so now this is very important. When we leave our opinions and use our martial mind, we want to judge the scripture whether from God or not. What makes the scripture that you believe is from God is from God indeed? What makes it? First what gives you the certainty that it's from God? First of all, this this was this is the whole point. That I'm I'm not I'm not saying that I'm that my specific scripture is is certainty or, or this from God. My actual position was that let's use our rational minds to to, to, to deduce um, the stuff we get from the scripture and then I relate no, no, it firstly, to hell. So what, we what, establish whether so it's from God or not. Else? You establish from God or not. For example, if the scripture says God put up a rainbow in the sky for a reason and that reason is when he's about to destroy mankind again you look at the clouds and you will see the rainbow and you will say ah now I remember it will remind him would you believe that's from God that's there in Genesis mm. I mean look, look I mean this 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 that is why way. using our rational mind to prove and disprove which is from God or not to verify and accept or verify and reject so when you look at the New Testament, for example, I guess I would same thing. Use am, it, but the way I'm is also a bit different because you're looking at things in terms of you want to look at the, the scripture and, and because you think it's, it, it's infallible and all that kind of stuff. No, you want you to want, believe whether it's infallible want, or not. Yeah, yeah. But but my, my my position is there's a lot of it, and not just with Christianity. I think with um, Islam, with, with Judaism, there's a lot of things which I would call it's kind of called a diaphora. Basically, things. What that does just, it mean? It basically just means things that aren't. Um, on, on the on the crooks of, of whether you know either God is real or not, or shouldn't be the crooks of your faith. So there's a, a lot of things that aren't actually you know if, if someone believes this and someone doesn't believe this, that it's, it's not really irrelevant. The basis, not really relevant your basis of belief to, to, to has to be from or, God's revelation rather than your own opinion. No, 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 That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying there's, there's specific things in scriptures where if, if you had a disagreement with another Muslim Muslim about it, you'd still all be Muslims. So I'm saying there's a lot of stuff like God like exists that. or not. No, obviously not that. Exactly. So what yeah, points so, we're talking yeah, yeah. about? So, so we're, we're talking, talking about, about we're talking about heaven and hell, and I'm so saying, heaven and I'm hell that, is something that I'm is so crucial. I'm, I'm saying that I don't think my conception. If I said this, that suddenly would not make me a Christian. In the same way, I think if you had this conception of saying, "Oh, um, I actually don't think it's it's a, it's an eternal hellfire. I think it would be something else." And did you even, God you mention to you? Did God mention in His Scripture in your belief, the Scripture that you believe in, that heaven or hell, eternal or not? So did He mention that? So let's say it's eternal. So let's. So let, let's 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 go on to obviously what you were saying because you even said which I not not all Muslims agree with this. I, saying what about did I say? Hell, about basically about hell, hmm. the idea of um, hell, um, you having a punishment. Actually, this is Sorry, what, sir, exactly what you said. What? But this, no, what did I say that many Muslims will not be. accept? Let me let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase. That. Let me back up. Essentially, what I'm saying is there's a disagreement mm. in terms of um, time when it comes to hell. There's a disagreement in terms of time when it comes to that punishment. And, 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 and you've actually um, and, uh, kind of brought that back to me by what you were saying in regards to people who had faith but had done a certain level of sin and then would be punished because of that. Now, what I'm saying is, obviously, there's, there's differences of opinion on that. Some people are saying eternal, not etern um, eternal on that scale. Do, do, you get, do, you get, do you follow me on that? Which people? The Muslims? Muslims. Yeah, Muslims. Uh, Christians no. as well. No, no. So the Quran clearly says, they will never come out of it. That's it. Khalas. There are people who yeah, will never come out of hell and they will remain there for, forever. So, and you're saying there's some people who will do as well? Sorry? There's some people who will leave. No, no. When people believe that hell is not eternal, when the Quran says so very clearly, no, I'm asking you, where, do, you know, do you think that there's some people who be in hell but not etern eternally? And that's what it sounded like you were saying. No, earlier. I'm saying the people who remain in hell fire, there are special categories of people. So if levels. you are a believer in the oneness of God and you think God is alone and worthy of worship, mm. 
even if you were punished in hellfire for however long mm. God is going to so punish it's not you. Eternal in that case. No, no, no. Hell remains eternal, but your punishment is yes, not going to be eternal. Okay, thank yes. you. Fine. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So at least then that at least so things like that. Because so this who deserves like eternal this. punishment in hellfire so and special no, no, categories so of sin? Those ki yeah. So those kind of um, conditions, those kind of conditions. I think you need light. Do you want to come here? Because yeah, otherwise, <laughs> you know, come here. If you... that's all right. Thank you. Th those kind of conditions are, are what I like. Those kind of conditions is, is to me then what, what would allow for this concept of, of justice still being um, being a bit more palatable in terms of God's justice and the reality of heaven and hell. Because it, it, in that sense, at least um, for those people, it wouldn't be eternal. However, you still have that difficulty for the people who it is eternal. And What's, I, the, I difficulty? The, first, What's the difficulty? So the first question I asked you actually yeah. at the very beginning was, um, a big problem I have is how you um, how you kind of match in terms of God's justice with this idea of eternal punishment with finite sin right. and finite you life. Should have under how, how does that how Because does that you use jargons like diaphora, hermeneutics, mm. um, I have to assume you're well read. This is a question mm. that has been asked of course. In, in philosophy. This is a question yeah. that is asked in, 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 in religious discussions. Yeah. What is the punishment against an infinite God? Finite punishment or infinite punishment? If if you commit a crime against an infinite God, should your punishment be finite or infinite? I don't think it should be. I think it should be finite because the people who are committing the sin no, are if, finite beings. If they, you they are committing a power. crime, but, but if you're committing if you're ability. committing a crime against an infinite God, but, but not a finite all, God. But first, of all, but first of all, the people who are doing that are finite entities, mm -hmm. and and they and they have the. Um, the kind of specific abilities that they have. So you're saying it's a sin against God, but that's a bit of a. It, it, it's it's. That it, is it's the punishment. What saying, no, what you're saying. What the you're only saying, crime that leads people to eternal punishment is a sin against God's God. Eternal, what you're saying is God, God's eternal. God's God's bigger than anything you can imagine. Infinite. So if you sin against God, then that's an infinite sin. But that to me is 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 is, is um wrong because you're looking at How is it it wrong? The, you're looking at it from the perspective of. Um, who's being sinned against rather than the agent doing the sin. The agent is, is what would dictate. Um, so you, you wouldn't judge a baby doing a crime in the same way that you judge um, okay. a man of 40 years old. Let me, so it's about, so it's more let about me, the agent rather than... Let me, let me help you there. So, no, so, so if, okay, a, a, a baby, uh, I don't know, a, a baby steals something um, and a 40-year-old man steals something, what they're sinning against, say it's Tesco's, it's still the same. It's still the same entity, so to speak, that they're sinning against. But the agents are, are two very different in terms of their abilities, in terms of their faculties. So it doesn't matter. Even though it's Tesco's, doesn't change. Those are two very different um, entities in terms of their ability. In terms. But of, your analogy doesn't um, work. Their, I'll their, tell you why. Their, A baby doesn't uh, have the faculties to understand that this but is. But we're like sin. babies compared to God. Please. So we're yeah. not like so. babies compared to God. So. Okay. <laughs> You can't even compare God with the creation, full stop. Agreed. But, but Agreed. the people who are going to be punished and so on are the people who have already reached the age of reason and discernment between right and wrong. So you already have an agent who is able to decipher between right and wrong and the accountability is for that agent. So if someone is insane, there is no accountability because they don't know between right and wrong. You know, they, they cannot be punished. You know, Hold on to your thoughts. If someone doesn't understand between right and wrong, you can't just say your punishment is like this. Mm. So firstly, you have to have a volition, your own choice. Mm. You have to commit this crime knowing it's, it's a crime. Mm. If you've done something and actually it was some sin, but that's an intentional mistake. Mm. There's a difference between intentional sin mm. and unintentional mistake. Mm. We have to make that distinction. Mm. God is just. He is not unjust to any of his creation. Mm. So he says, for example, okay, if God says to you and me, because you are having a rational discussion with me, intellectual discussion, you understand right and wrong. Yeah. If God says, look, if you reject me and worship someone else, yeah. I am going to punish you in eternal hellfire. Yeah. And he makes that clear in black and white. Yeah. And you still do that. Yeah. Why do you say, oh God? Because it's not black and white. But first of all, no, 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 wait, wait. If he makes it black and white, look, God will punish you with eternal hellfire if you associate a partner with him. He makes it clear. He gives it in revelation. 
He tells to the Prophet and messengers and he says clearly black and white without any ambiguity. If you set up a partner with God, whether it's a son of God or a daughter of God or a mother, brother, whatever, he will put you in hellfire for eternity and there's no coming out. Those people who go to hellfire, are you going to say, they're going to say, oh, why are you torturing me for eternity? God will say, I've already told you, this is the punishment that is awaits. This was my justice. I told you the consequence. I didn't say, oh, there's going to be punishment. And you didn't know because it was vague. If God told you the punishment is specific, it is eternal hellfire and you still did it, you can't complain when you're going to internal hellfire. That's the justice of God. Just, That's the justice of God. One, one quick thing. A lot of, I hear this argument a lot. If God is all merciful and there is the existence of eternal hellfire, even for those who reject God, I've heard that aren't they too contradictory? No, God is just. At the same time, his justice is this. He says, this is my law. If you associate a partner with me, you will be there in hellfire for eternity and there's no coming out. So is he all merciful with the exception of God? No, 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 no. He can exercise his mercy, but his justice, he says very clearly, there will be no injustice done to anyone. And this is the law. If you commit this associate partners with him, the shirk, you will remain in hellfire in this punishment forever. So those people who did this crime and they go in hellfire, they cannot complain saying, oh, why did you put me in hellfire forever? I think they can, but, 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 I, I but God is very clear. Can you uh, associate partners with Allah, like with your nafs, or like following your nafs, and uh, like with sin? Like, do you know what I mean? So like, uh, say you were... Uh, now, if you worship yourself, yeah. Besides God, that yeah. would be a partner against God, along with God. So, I mean, what, what I want to take it back to, I didn't want to interrupt you, I want to just yeah. very brief. You were also talking about right and wrong. And it just sparked my mind, but obviously this conversation we were having. And this is where, again, I feel like this is the issue where we have to accept, unfortunately, that rationality is, is, is a big key for us. Because even when you're saying about kind of right and wrong, everyone's conception of that is difficult. That's why you have so many different conceptions of you know what people deem as right and wrong things that are certain. That's why the objective morality wrong. comes from exactly, God. Exactly, exactly. But then when, when we're saying what, what, what the ob objective um, version is of that, mm -hmm. there's disagreements even within the same movement. So, so what... No, no, you're actually playing this too much. When God says, do not kill, murder is wrong, there is no disagreement on that. But then when Something you put it into the, the reality of, of day to day life with, with the amount of um, different circumstances people have, obviously killing in certain situations rather than others, things like that. No, killing is killing. It could be intentional mis an intentional mistake or intentional cold blooded murder. Yeah, and so, so in certain circumstances, even though it says do not kill, there would be times where morally we could say that it would still be moral to kill someone, even though. Um, you know, it, no, it no, says when, that, it says when God says do not kill, he says do not kill an innocent soul. Mm. When the hands of the law kills someone by hanging or by crucifixion or by death penalty this is the justice that's been done because of their crimes that's not unlawful killing that is the just killing when a capital punishment is implemented by the legal system it's still killing but that killing is justifiable that is killing that is god allows and justifies for it to happen to establish peace and tranquility and justice on earth even though that is killing so the killing that God forbid is unjustful killing of the innocent people. So what, what I'm basically trying to say to you is that with each individual, when you're trying to talk about sin and sin against God and sin against this, first of all, um, and I know you're trying to more put it down to the crux, which is belief in not belief of um, kind of disbelief of God, because that's the crux of it. But I'm even saying just sin generally. First of all, the average person doesn't commit a sin and, and think, oh, that's a sin against God. So that they commit a sin, but it's not that they're thinking, oh, this is a sin that's against an infinite being. It's just, it's just a sin, it's just something wrong that they're doing. But second of all, that conception of, of what their right and wrong is, is, is different for each person, right? Is that, is that right? You're highlighting the problem where people, in, his, in their ignorance, what they do. Islam is but not no, no, like that. Islam, no, 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 no. That's the wait, 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 wait. That's so the, how can you judge that, that justly? No, I'll just tell you something. Islam emphasizes on education from day one. Education, learning is mandatory, it's mandatory, it's obligatory on every Muslim man and woman. So if people are ignorant, it doesn't make them an excuse. Oh, I was ignorant and I raped someone. 
that is not going to be an ex acceptable excuse. Of, of so you can't bring this saying. excuse and say, oh, course, how can God punish someone eternally? Um, because no, I like, yeah, I like God, God, he clearly states in the Quran, in the Quran, in the Quran, in the Quran, associating partner with God, they will go into hellfire and there will be no helpers, there will be no coming out. That is something that is ingrained, indoctrinated, that is taught, that is blasted everywhere in, in the Muslim mind. So then after that you're saying, oh, someone didn't know. This kind of excuse doesn't work in reality. The reality the is... Opposite. Reality, it, it, it works. Which reality? It works in what, the it works ignorant in reality of people who don't learn, learn their it religion? Works, it works within what you're saying in the confines of dogma, but it doesn't work in terms of the reality of life. What it's, reality of life? The Western because, life? Not the Western, Eastern life? It's everything. It's Everywhere. Everything. That's, that's, that's more to the point. Look, There's look. so much variety. If you're There's a Muslim, so if you're a Muslim, you're just, shouldn't you know what makes backing, to be a Muslim? You're just backing my point. There's so much variety. There's variety in terms of what I was trying to talk about, which is right and wrong. How people are based. You have, I don't want to bore you with more jargon, but obviously consequentialism, um, you know, um, Kantian ethics, all, all types of different um, mm -hmm. stuff that people would deem as what they would say. I can see why you're right. confused. No that's worries. Right. Don't worry about that. No, no, no. Because of but, the, all these philosophical, but, ethical morals that you've read, but, no, 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 they have no, really no. confused no, no, you. No, 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 stop this. This, this was before, even before I read a book, this, this is the reality. This is the reality. People have differences of opinion. You speak to one person, they think this, this certain thing would be moral, this certain thing would be immoral. And yes, you, you can talk, we can talk about laws, the commandments, mm -hmm. but then once you put those into specific okay. situations, it's very difficult. So that's, that's just a side note. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to say to you, is that when we when we have um, kind of all, all, all these kind of different um, um, what one kind of stick does does it make sense? We don't judge people. Okay, that's why you're wrong. Sorry, by, no, no, by, sorry, not you. God I'm judges not saying, people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. By, by God judging those people mm -hmm. on on um, a kind of by his um, laws. By, by on, on that stick, on that kind of straight, straight narrow no, line. No, of God point. set you're, up his heaven, laws and, hell, and he judges and everyone, people and by his laws. going to hell eternally. That doesn't really make sense. That, wait, that's, wait, not, wait. that's not just. Just one second. This is it's very strange. When you make claims like this, I mean, I, I get really shocked. If God says very clearly, look, if you associate a partner with me, he is going to put you into hellfire for eternity. Wait, one moment, one moment. And you meet God. And God says, look, you ended up in hellfire and I told you this is going to happen and you're saying it's not just? Even even in terms of, so wait, can I just ask you a question because I'm trying to work out your mindset. Are you specifically wanting to, to focus on the sin essentially of um, denying God? Are you just talking about sin in general? I find it very strange. I mean, we have been talking about... Are you talking about sin in general or sin in denying God? I mean, you should have realized so far that denying I am God. talking about this one particular sin. Denying God. That one particular sin that will give you one way ticket to hellfire forever denying god. that sin is not just denying god what have i been saying all that time partner. associating a partner with god I mean, that crime that's not necessarily what i was talking about but that's where you but no no, to, to, to no remember what we talked about remember what we talked about that's you had an issue about no no you had an issue about not punishment in hellfire but eternal punishment and i said eternal punishment is for a category of people, mm. a special category. Mm. And one category, especially with black and white, is this category of people who commit the shirk, associating partners with mm. God. Mm. If God himself declares, mm. I am going to put you in hellfire for eternity if you do that crime. And he constantly reminds you, he makes it clear through his prophets and messengers in his revelation. And then you end up doing that crime and you go into hellfire and then you say god that is not just enough, do you really think do you, no, do you really think i think we've been talking past each other a no, little no, bit then, I, 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 I want to understand to the confines of no no I'm i want to understand at, your question of justice hell, yeah i'm talking about justice in general when you when you when you accuse god saying this is not just do you really think you have a point there of saying god is just no i i believe no no, no. Just. That, i'm saying that maybe that, this, that, this that person that okay. person who ends up in eternal hellfire by committing an associating partner with God. Mm -hmm. And he says to God, God, you are unjust to put me in hellfire forever. Do you think he's got a point there? Or he's actually got a right point? He's, he's actually correct? It's, it's not, it's, look, I mean, what, what, makes, I, what, I what makes his opinion correct that God is actually unjust? If a, if a, if a person said that.
I would like to know what are, what, what makes that person to be saying, look, I am right, you are God, you are unjust because you put could, me in the hellfire. They, they, no, they could use vagueness in terms of, not obviously in terms of what, what God said in, in the scripture, but vagueness in terms of... There is no that, vagueness that, in the scripture that, on that yeah, issue. In terms of that, in terms so of that excuse reality. is lifted. No, no, no that excuse is lifted. It wasn't that's, vague. I, that's, and you're, but this is what I don't like, because you're basically, you're basically framing it as essentially like... Um, within like the confines of, 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 of like, okay. It's black and white. No, no, but like, like you kind of grew up as a, a, a Muslim or whatever, and, and then you, you kind of, um, you kind of associate a partner with God okay. and, and whatnot. I'm looking at it as a bigger scale. There's, there's, there's people of all, all different types of um, But you asked me that question though. All types of but that's different. The answer is different. No, but I if you ask me, but you, you can find it something that you I ask, ask. But I you, you're ask asking from the Islamic perspective. I asked about eternal If Bible, people I wanted to put it in this specific yeah, yeah. notion. I, I didn't do I, I, Okay, I answered you from the Muslim perspective. When a Muslim commits a shirk, for example, what's going to happen? If there is a non-Muslim who commits a shirk associating partners with God, not knowing that, okay? This is a different scenario. He didn't even know. If someone didn't know, that's a different scenario altogether. If someone didn't know that I'm supposed to do this and do that, God is not unjust. God is not unjust. But God gave them enough reason and intellect in this life not to associate partners with God. Because this universe, you can see, even is your, using your intellect, that there's not more than one God operating this universe. If there were more than one God, there would be corruption and chaos. So if you had taken what God has given you as a trust, your intellect, and used it, you would not have ended up as a polytheist. And if you rejected polytheism, then you have an associate partners with God. But if you did not use the faculty of intellect that God endowed you with, He trusted you with, then you have to then justify yourself why all this happened and so on and so forth. But God is not unjust. If there is a genuine person who is genuinely ignorant, didn't know, God's not going to punish um, the eternal hellfire like that because God is the most just. So that's a different answer here. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I just think you confine what I was saying to something very specific. There's a reason I don't think that's the criteria to enter the hellfire. Why do you get it? No, because of other, the other things that come in the same sense. I'm saying denying God in general. He's saying, oh, this idea of associating a partner with God is very much like God, and he's saying, I'm saying that there's other things that would pick for people in the hellfire. That's the okay. question. Is there something other than shirk that can make someone go to eternal hellfire? That's the question. Just to make it clear, yeah, yeah. Even rejecting God altogether, yeah, anything other than that is also associating partners with God, because you made someone else the judge of everything. The God is not in the act, the, the, the sovereign master, the creator, Lord of this universe. Essentially, atheist. Yes, it's one form of shirk. Okay. Yeah, um, so if you don't have any questions, I mean, you can ask um, yeah, anyone else fine. because no, I have to go. Have to, yeah, no, 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 because of that, I have to go and, and, and pray my mother. Yeah, yeah, pray. no. Thank, thanks very much yeah? for your time. Thank okay. you. That was very helpful. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.